today we are going to talk about, let me just see if that front's live. No, it's not there. Okay. Today we're going to talk about using digital events as part of your digital marketing strategy. And a lot of people don't consider events part of digital marketing. They think it's a little bit separate. And so we're going to talk about three things today about why you should be using them. The first one is to increase brand awareness. Um, they allow you to establish relationships and boost sales through events. Secondly, we're going to talk about how to craft those digital event experiences um, that really captivate your customers and your employees. And then lastly, we're going to talk about how to reimagine virtual events, how to, how to create that experience that your attendees are going to love. And you're going to hear me kind of go back and forth. Sometimes I say virtual, sometimes I say digital. They're the same thing. Um, the reason I'm starting to transition to digital is because in this day and age, a lot of people, when they think virtual, are thinking AI, Oculus, things like that. And we're really talking about that digital event and that digital event component. So these are the three things that we're going to be talking about today. So everything that we talk about applies to live events, virtual events, and hybrid events. And hybrid events, at their simplest definition, is an event where you have a live audience and an event where you have a remote audience. So you have one event, two audiences. Because if I ask everybody in this room what a hybrid event is, I will get a different answer pretty much from every single person. So if we can bring it down to that simplest form where it's a single event with two different audiences that you have to focus on, that's what makes up a hybrid event. So who should use virtual events? Um, you know, up here I've got kind of the mom and pop brick and mortar, right? We have coaches and consultants, service providers, agencies. This room alone, we have agencies, we've had corporate, we've had education, um, nonprofits, right? We have a really big mix of people who are in this room. Should they be using apps, uh, digital events? And the answer is, yeah, absolutely. You should be using events as part of your digital marketing plan. So why? First off, they increase brand awareness. They help us establish relationships and they help us to boost sales through our events. They provide us with a massive increase in reach. And you know, it's really been kind of fun watching this over the last couple of years because digital and virtual events have always provided a global reach for us, but most people just didn't think about it. Like they were just focused on the kind of their geographic area and they didn't think about the global reach that they could have with events. So to give you an example, we have a client that they had a sustainability message. We've been talking about sustainability for two days in this room. They had a message that they were trying to get out. They were based in Australia and they were trying to get this message out across the world. So we were doing virtual events for them where their speakers were from Australia and Fiji and South Africa and London, and we even had a speaker in from China, um, which is a little bit more of a difficult thing to do. And they had people that were attending. We were producing at two in the morning because of the time difference, right? But they had a people that were attending. They thought it was just going to really be kind of Pacific region that was attending. They had people all over the world that were attending because it was a message that they wanted to hear. They wanted to learn more about it. And so these events are giving us this global reach that people really hadn't thought about before. So that's one of the reasons that you're gonna to wanna to increase your digital events in your plan. Um, relationships, business is about relationships. It's about that human to human connection. And what we found when the pandemic hit is a lot of businesses kind of had that oh moment, right? where they're like, how do I reach people? I can no longer see people face to face. I don't have people walking into my restaurant. I don't have people walking into my store. I can't go to a live event anymore. So how do I have that face to face time? And so events, when we hold them online, they are giving us the ability to build those relationships with people. And the more events that we have with repeat audiences, the better those relationships are getting. So it's rebuilding that human to human connection that we all really, really want. I mean, I love being at live events. I love being back in a room. I love talking to people in person. But when I can't, then these are really providing the ability to build those relationships. 
And then bottom line, right? Boost sales. If you are in the business where you need to make money, events are a really good way to help boost your sales, whether they're live or online. And then increasing your top of funnel. Events are an amazing way to build top of funnel. Whether you're using a webinar, a workshop, a virtual summit, whatever type of event that you are building, you are able to put more leads in that top of funnel so that assuming that you have a really good marketing plan, as you're moving those people through that funnel, you have more conversions at the back end. So it's a great way to increase your top of funnel. So typical digital marketing, right? We all are very familiar with pretty much every, I, I called them a hexagon a couple of weeks ago, and then I realized they're actually octagons. <laughs> but within these octagons, you know, typical digital marketing, right? We just heard a presentation on SEO. We have content marketing. We have social media, email marketing, analytics, website, digital campaign, PPC, all of these different things that are part of a typical digital marketing strategy. But there's some challenges built in some of these, and we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. And so what I tell people all the time is there's something missing here. And what's missing is that additional block for your events. They need to be part of that strategy. You can't actually take them out because if you do, you're actually missing a big piece. So let's talk about um, PPC ads, for example. Um, I hate paying for ads. <laughs> It's necessary. I just personally hate paying for ads. And we've seen some things in the last you know, year or so that are really challenging. So ad costs are going up, right? They're going to continue going up. There's not going to be any change there. We have competitive markets. So we have people that are doing things either better than we are or faster than we are, or maybe they just know the latest hack, right? And they're getting there faster and smarter than we are. We also have to, with these competitive markets, we're also competing against false information and people that don't know what they're doing, but they're able to sell it really, really well. So we have to deal with these competitive markets. And then we had our little iOS update last year. I think it was 14.5 where they were able to turn off tracking, right? You download a new app, it says, do you want this app to track you? 96% of US users said no. Only 4% said yes. I'm pretty sure that that 4% is the ones that actually don't read what that little button on the message said, they just hit yes. That's what my parents would do, right? So pop up, you just hit yes. So we had this challenge with iOS of, we lost a lot of those tracking capabilities. Well, guess what happened after that? Google followed suit, right? And they've been implementing all of those abilities to turn off things within their Google Play Store. So this has been a huge challenge. I go to digital marketing conferences all the time. This is all you hear about. People are like, oh my gosh, I can't track them anymore. I can't put them through there. I can't, it's harder to do lookalikes, you know, because they are really having a hard time getting that information from people. So there's been a lot of challenges with digital marketing in the last year or two that we don't, in, you know, think about owning our list, right? Facebook, if we have all these people following our Facebook page and Facebook decides that today they no longer like us, what happened to all of your, your contacts in there? They're gone. Same thing with LinkedIn, same thing with any other social media platform. We don't own those leads. They do. They just let us use them. And so if we can get into where we're doing events, all of those leads are ours. People are opting in for our event. They are registering for our event. They are going on our list, right? Those are all leads that we now own. So our level of control is a lot higher than with some of the more traditional digital marketing strategies. So this is a random customer journey. You could pick any customer journey layout that you want. Um, but the beauty with events is that in all of these different stages within the customer journey, I can put an event anywhere. You could ask me for any stage and I can tell you what, that we have an event we can put in there. So depending on whether you are trying to front load your customer journey and trying to get more awareness and trying to get more leads and trying to build that front end, we can put events in there. 
Obviously, we can put events in in the middle we, for per, uh, purchasing, right? Buyers. But we can do some really cool events at the end, too, to help advocacy, to help get those raving fans that we all want. So that you can put an, an event anywhere within this customer journey. And the cool thing is you can also do multiple events. So if you want to focus today on, on your lead gen, you can focus on that. But then you can also move to the end and, you know, go to your raving fans. So there's a lot of flexibility with events. This is not a marketing plan. <laughs> I have so many clients that think that this is a marketing plan. It's not. Hope and prayer, prayer and guessing is not going to help you. So you have to actually build this into your customer journey. So we're going to get creative. Um, I'm going to show you, it's actually everybody's favorite slide. I'm going to show you some different virtual event formats and styles that we can play with, all right? So here we go. We have kind of your traditional runs, right? We have conferences, expos, trade shows. Those are geared more to our B2C, right? We want to get consumers there. We have summits. We have exhibitions. We have town halls. We have meetups. We have product launches. We have awards and recognition ceremonies. We did a three-day award and recognition um, gala for a um, healthcare insurance healthcare company. Um, that was a whole lot of fun. Three days. So some of these are more external facing, right? They're for your clients. Some of these are more internal facing. They're for your company. They're for your employees. But, you know, just in case that's not enough, there's only a couple more. So we can throw in all of these different things. There actually are more, but I ran out of room on the slide. Um, so we can do company-wide events. We can do networking. We can do AMAs. I love doing AMAs. Um, we have a client that we were doing two week long sales and marketing meetings where they were meeting with their buyers and letting them know what they were getting that, the, that year and what kind of feedback they were getting. Um, career fairs, onboarding, retreats, user events, fireside chats, um, VIP experiences. I'm a huge advocate of VIP experiences. VIP experiences allow us to really treat those people that are already giving us money and to really find a way to thank them. And it's a great way to move them into that raving fan and advocacy stage. So we'll do VIP experiences a lot. Um, what else is up there? We've done parties. We do keynotes. I mean, you name it, we can pretty much take any of those and put them somewhere within your customer journey. So what's really important though, is I actually haven't counted to see how many are up there. Don't do all of them. <laughs> Pick one. Do it really, really well. Figure out your proof of concept so that you can repeat it, and then maybe try another one. But just choose one that's really important to the growth of your business or your client's business and roll with that one. These can be done in person. These can be done virtually. These can be done as a combination. So lots of different events that are here. All right, so we're going to talk about a couple of scenarios of things that you can do in terms of um, digital events, and then we might actually pick somebody here too if somebody has a question on one. So let's talk about a scenario with a coach and consultant. So coaches and consultants are famous for not having enough hours in the day, right? They're one person. We see this with the agencies all the time too. We just don't have enough hours in the day. Coaches and consultants are one person. They can only have so many coaching sessions a day, right? So whether they're doing those in person, virtually, one-on-one, -on -one, they can only do, let's say, eight at the max. And honestly, at eight, they're going to be completely burnt out. But when they start bringing in more digital events, they can now do these in a one-to-many relationship. So they can have a group coaching session, for example. They can have a session that maybe is a full-day workshop that they're working with a lot of people that they're now moving those people through their customer journey to maybe move them to that one-on-one -on -one or move them into a, a smaller group coaching, right? Smaller groups, higher money. So they're able to move into that one-to-one, -one, or excuse me, one-to-many relationship to get exposure to more people, to get their messaging, their coaching practice out to more people and not have to take up so much time. So we've actually done events where we did a uh, three-day long event, um, similar to structure to something like this, right? People are coming in, they're learning, they're getting value, they're building that no-like trust with the person that's up on stage talking to them, 
And then we were moving them into a mastermind leadership program that was a $30,000 a year program. So they spent three days with the head con coach and consultant learning all these tips and tricks and all of these amazing things that build their businesses. Well, at the end of three days, when we say, wouldn't you like more? Don't you want to spend time with this person? Oh, it only costs $30,000, right? They had people lining up to pay for that because they had the ability to have that know, like, and trust. You can have that in person. You can do that also visually, uh, virtually and, and digitally as well. So it's a great way to move them through that customer journey. Let's talk about brick and mortars. Um, are there any mannequin shoppers here? Please tell me I'm not the only one. I'm a mannequin shopper. Do you all know what that is? I can't buy anything <laughs> unless it's put together on a mannequin. Like if you tell me, hey, go find this outfit to go do this thing, I'm like, yeah, no, but if you, if I walk in the store and there's this mannequin and like the jewel, I literally have had stores like take the clothes off the mannequin, including the jewelry, because it's an easy way for me to shop. So if I've got a retail store that maybe they're not getting as much foot traffic as they used to, maybe they're short staffed. I don't know about here. We have stores that have limited hours now because they are short staffed. They can't get enough employees to work there. Well, if you're short staffed, how do you get your sales in? If you're only open four hours versus eight or 10, how do you get your sales in? So you can do some really cool things with retail stores. You can do digital, whether you want to call them product launches, pop-up stores are a great digital virtual event for those. So let's just imagine, so um, this outfit on the back, on the left there with the black shirt and the little mustard jacket and the jeans, I would totally buy that in two seconds, by the way, because it's all put together. So if I've got somebody coming online and they're putting outfits together for me and, and I'm the first person to see them, you know, I attend this event, maybe, you know, only the people who are attending this virtual pop-up shop, they're the ones that get to see this a week before anybody else, right? So not only am I seeing them put these clothes together, but I also have limited access. I'm special now, right? I get access to these before anybody else does. Ask me how fast I'm going to give them my money because I'm very fast, especially if you put it together and, you know, we've got the boots going. I mean, everything's right there. The purse is above it. Like, I literally can be like, yes, this is my size. Here's my credit card. Right, so if you are of any kind of a brick and mortar, that gives them the ability to really look at a different way to sell their merchandise and to get exposure to people that maybe aren't local. So we're in Hawaii, right? There's a lot of things on my Hawaii shopping list that I cannot get in Arizona. So if I have a Hawaii store that's doing a virtual pop-up, and they're showing me some really cool outfits that I can't get anywhere else. And oh, by the way, they ship too. I'm totally giving them my credit card and they can ship those to me. Okay, so just a couple of different scenarios that we can use for people to just think differently and think how they can take something that normally is very, very much in person and face to face and convert that to the digital space. And we can go over some other scenarios later, too, if you guys want. So let's move into the second part, um, crafting the dif digital event experiences so that they captivate your customers and employees. All I hear now is, oh, another virtual meeting. Oh, I got to go get on Zoom. Nothing against Zoom. I love them. I use them all the time. Oh, I got to go get on Teams. Nothing against Teams. Love them, too. But people have that reaction now, right? Because all they do is virtual. I know when the pandemic first started, I literally was on virtual meetings for 15 hours a day. And as a girl, that meant hair and makeup and clothes that were decent from at least this far up and hoping the dogs would be quiet. And I, like, it's a lot of mental energy, right? So we now have to, we have this challenge that we have to be able to craft these new digital events that are interesting to people and they're excited and they're not falling asleep and they're not walking away from their computers. So how do we do that? So we use the three E's of events. That is excitement, engagement, and experience. We have to have all three. 
So let's talk excitement. I love this little dude. I don't know who he is, but he's adorable. Um, your attendees must be excited to attend your event. They must look forward to it. So when we're planning that event and planning that customer's journey, we have to ask some hard questions. The first one being, why are you having this event in the first place? Why? The answer of, well, we always have an annual event is not the correct answer. If you, ask, if you answer that way, I'm going to be like, well, great. Why do you have to have an annual event? Well, because we have to show our people stuff. Well, why do you have to show your people stuff? It's just going down and it's like the three-year-old that keeps saying, why, 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 right? We have to be able to figure out why we're having the event. What's the goal of the event? Are we having it because we wanted to have networking? Are we having it because we want to sell something? Are we having it because it's educational? What is the end goal? What do we want people to do? Do we want them to buy something? Do we want them to you know, build their business through new connections? What is that end goal that we want them to have? Same thing, what actions are we trying to drive? Why should someone attend? Well, it's a really cool event. Well, that's nice, but that's not really why somebody should attend. Why should they attend? How are we going to invite them? Are we sending out emails? Are we picking up the phone? Are we sending out evites? Are we sending out, are we driving Facebook ads? How are we going to invite them? And then how are we going to get them excited about com coming? So you have to go through these questions first before you can start planning anything else. We always say start with the end to get to the front. So you probably heard me mention, oh, well, we can invite them via email or we can call them, right? People usually just shudder when I say we can call them. They're like, we're not going to call them. That's what marketing automation is for. Well, we had a client that they were holding an internal corporate event. So their employees were invited. They were not required to come. And it wasn't even the you're not required to come. Yeah, sure. Right. I mean, they literally were not required to come. Um, but it was an, an event that they were doing some education for, lots of fun networking, lots of fun parties. They just wanted to do something special for these, these very high-stressed um, employees. So there were 987 employees on the list that were invited. And we sent them all login access to the platform about a week before. And we were trying, and we had told all of them, you know, log in early, go do your profile, go do this, go do that, da, da 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 And we were watching the numbers, and we weren't seeing people logging in. We had maybe about, oh gosh, it was less than, less than 50% that had logged in. And so they decided that they were going to do something really unique. They were going to pick up a phone. And they called and they simply said, you know, hey, Joe, you know, we, we noticed you hadn't logged in yet. We're so excited about this event. It starts on Monday. We really want you to come. These are the really cool things that we're going to be doing. You know, we really want you to be there. What do you think? And, and Joe was like, yeah, of course. I just hadn't gotten to it. Right. So they actually started making phone calls, just personally inviting people and personally telling them how exciting it was going to be and what they were going to miss out on if they weren't there. Of those 987 people, we had 968 attend online. That is a 98% show rate. Who wants a 98% show rate? Because I know I do. All they did was pick up the phone when they weren't seeing traction. So be willing to go through and to navigate and pay attention to your numbers and then be willing to do something to get people online. All right, digital events must engage your attendees. So we will bring in different ways to engage our attendees, right? Things that make it different. Um, we do bring in AV production a lot. Um, so instead of doing what you know, I hear all the time, just a Zoom meeting, right? Um, we will bring in AV production. It allows us to do things like custom backgrounds, lower thirds, switching. So if we are switching from a single speaker to a PowerPoint to now we're talking to a panel, now we're back to the single speaker. So we'll have people that are switching and, and it makes it a little bit more of a produced show and a little bit more professional. Um, and it's different, right? It's not the Brady Bunch view. So the screen is constantly changing in front of people and that helps to keep their interest. 
We'll also bring in gamification. Um, this is just one app that we use called Ingameo. Um, they have some really cool things. So one of their things I really like for larger events is they have a map. So the map will go up on screen and while we're getting started, we'll be like, hey, everybody, tell us where you're from. You know, scan the QR code and go pin yourself on the map. And so it's really cool to sit there and watch this thing just automatically populate and people love it. So we'll bring in gamification. That way we will also bring in gamification of, you know, hey, go do your profile and I'll give you 25 points. And if you attend this session, I'll give you 50 points. And if you go and see this exhibitor, I'll give you 100 points. And um, people love gamification. They get really crazy competitive with it. Um, we've actually taken it to where, you know, if you comment in a discussion forum, you're going to get points. We've actually taken that one off. We've had people that were going in and hitting a period and hitting enter and hitting a period and hitting enter. And then you look up their points and they're like 20,000 points. Um, and then you have to manually clean that up and that's an awful job. So that one we have taken off. Um, just because people get really, really competitive. And it doesn't even re really matter what the prizes are, like they just want the prizes. Um, so it gets a little bit crazy. And then networking. We bring in networking all the time with our digital and hybrid events. Now it's a challenge, right? How do you network with people who are online? We started our day off yesterday. I actually hate icebreakers and I really like the one we did here. Um, that was a great one. So what we did here is they had cards that had questions on them and we walked around the room or we're at a live event, we walked around the room and we asked questions of the different attendees, right? Um, they were good generic questions. Thankfully, they weren't like Cards Against Humanity. I love that game, but that might not be a good one for business. Um, but it was a great way to break the ice. So find a way to do something like that online, something different that you can do with networking. And people always ask me, you know, hey, if it's a hybrid event, should we keep the networking separate, right? The live people network over here, the digital people network over here. And in most cases, I will say, yes, that's appropriate. But I do tell people, if there is any way that you can actually combine those two groups just once, do it. And the reason is, is because you're providing exposure to these people, to all these other people that they wouldn't be able to see normally. Right. So there's some technical challenges in bringing those pieces together. It's definitely doable. So if you can do it and your tech people can do that, definitely bring them in and mix those two groups up and do something. You know, if you put if you sit there and say, OK, everybody go into this breakout room and just go network. Either no one's going to show up or they're going to show up, they're going to be in the room and you're going to have all these people in the room doing nothing. Right. So with any kind of digital networking, make sure you have a facilitator in that room that is actually getting people talking, whether they're answering questions on a card, whether they're having, you know, almost like the lunch topic tables, right? This room, we're going to discuss networking. This room, we're going to discuss um, marketing. This room, we're going to discuss whatever. Have some guided, facilitated conversations in there to get people talking, because otherwise it's just an empty room. Um, or it's complete chaos, one of the two, like it's either extreme. You have people talking over each other and it's insane. And then your content must be engaging to not only make them want to attend, but to make them want to return the next time around. So make sure that your speakers are offering really value-driven, actionable content that your people want to hear and is interesting. Because if your attendees are looking like this, where they are dreading your event, where they're dreading a session, where they're trying to decide how they can sneak out of the room, you know, even online, we all know who's there, right? We can track that. So if your attendees are looking like this, it doesn't matter what you've planned for your event. You could have the best platform. You could have the best AV production company. You could have the best everything but it has totally to do with your content. If your content's not good, your attendees are gonna hate you. So make sure that you have really value-driven, engaging content that's actionable. And then our third part, and this is where we're gonna spend a little bit more time, is reimagining virtual events to create an experience that your attendees are gonna love. So we talked about excitement, 
We talked about engagement. Now we're going to talk about experience because this is a really hard one when you're online. Because we all know, you know, the beauty of live events, right, is walking in the room, you have the buzz, you have the energy, you get to meet new people, you get to have conversations, you get to talk over food. I bond with everybody over food. I don't know about you guys. You put food in front of me, I'm a happy camper. Um, we bond over drinks, whether we're, they're alcoholic or not, right? We bond because of all of that excitement and buzz when we're in a live room. But when we're online, that's much, much harder. We can never replicate that 100%. If anybody ever says to me, oh, you can absolutely replicate that, I'm not like, yeah, we need to have a little argument about that, right? So let's find ways that we can actually reimagine those. And I'm going to give you an example. And this was a hard one. Um, I had a client who called me and she said, you know, I'm taking my team. Every year I take my team and we go on an annual retreat to a private island with a private chef. And we do a couple of, you know, quarterly planning type things. But then the rest of the weekend is like team building. Everybody's at the beach. They get their lunch made every day. And we're going. And I'm like, great. Can I go? And she's like, well, that's the bad news. We need to make it 100% virtual this year. Can you help? And I'm like, private island, <laughs> private chef, and now it's virtual. I can't compete with that. So let's come up with some alternatives, but there is no way I can compete. Like, I'm, I'm good. I'm not that good. Um, so let's talk about how we can provide an experience for our attendees. So most digital events, the biggest thing with digital is there's only two senses that we incorporate, vision and hearing. That's it. We're looking at the screen. We're listening to the speakers coming out. That's it. So anytime that we can actually incorporate all five or even three of the five or four of the five, then we can absolutely get their attention and give them a different experience. So here's a few ways that we can do that. Um, I talked about we, we put gamification in a lot. We will do, you know, hey, here's your scavenger hunt on the virtual platform, right? The beauty of doing that is it not only gets them in the platform, but then they start getting used to the platform before the event. So we will reward them. We'll put little Easter eggs all over the, the platform, and they have to go and find them. Um, we do tastings a lot. Wine tastings, whiskey tastings, beer tastings, tequila tastings. Um, where we will, you know, depending on the size of the group, we will ship it out to them um, and do tastings with them. That's usually our big networking thing at the end of the night. We do um, chocolate tastings. You notice I have wine and chocolate next to each other, so you all now know how to bribe me. Um, but we will do chocolate tastings together. Um, we've had a yogi. This one was great. That three-day event that we did for the um, awards gala, during the breaks, we had a yogi that was teaching people how to sit at their desk and breathe and move and stretch and still never have to get out of their chair, but feel refreshed and energetic and everything else. And at the end of the event, the client came back to me and called me and he's like, oh, I'm so glad that you brought him on. And I don't know how you guys got him live on, on you know, camera because of, of COVID and everything else, but we're so excited that you got him on. And I was like, those were pre-recorded videos. We just simulived them. We live streamed it, pretended they were real. The client had no idea. The attendees had no idea because they were interacting with somebody who was really good at its job. So it went over really, really well. Um, we've brought in magicians as well. Um, we have brought in food delivery is another favorite one of mine. We, obviously, there's a theme. Um, we will deliver food, and we'll do it in one of two ways. So we will sometimes actually deliver food, right? So there's a couple of different companies that we have used. Um, there's one on the mainland that I had just recently found out about called Farmer's Fridge. And they have very healthy meals. They actually have vending machines in all the airports. If you guys are on the mainland and you see them in the airports, um, they're great. And so we arranged with them. We called them. They delivered to certain states. And we said, great, we want to do um, you know, X amount per employee. And the employees were actually able to go online with a gift card and choose exactly what they wanted for their meals. Everything was delivered and they had meals for their three-day event. So that works really well. Sometimes we'll do gift cards. We can do Uber Eats gift cards. Those are super easy. 
Um, sometimes we'll actually deliver a meal, ask about food allergies, all of those things, but we'll have them all delivered. And what we really like to do is we like to deliver them at the same time. We want everybody to be eating lunch with each other on camera, which I know sounds like ridiculous. Like, why do I want to watch this person eat on camera? But again, we bond over food. So it's a great way and it's different, right? It's not so stoic. It's not so corporate. We can just sit and eat and laugh and have fun. So we do food delivery a lot. We've done art classes. Um, these are fun. You can either send the supplies to people or you can go on Amazon and make like the little shopping list and have people get their, you know, buy their own if you're trying to be budget conscious. Um, but we've had, we had one lady on, she's like, okay, now draw the line and now draw the little triangle and then do the circle and do this and poof, you have a bird. And I was like, oh my gosh, they have a bird. And then we had everybody hold theirs up on camera and I was like, oh my gosh. They all have birds. Like, it was amazing. I have no idea how they, I, I can't draw, but everybody was able to do this. And they had so much fun. And it was really cool watching them share with each other because they all had the same painting, but it was just a little different, right? Like, you could see all their different personalities come out in it. So it was a really fun activity to do. We've done comedy. We have done DJs. Um, we had one DJ that we were working with online and he just had a hard audience and they just were like, and he's playing and they're like, and so he finally transitioned. He's like, fine, we're going to play name that tune. I'm old. I actually remember that show. Um, we started playing Name That Tune. Everybody, again, competition, right? Everybody was 100% in it. Name That Tune in three notes. They had so much fun with it. And so it was just a great way, end of day, to get people energized. You can do this middle of the day, too, just to get people up and running and things like that. Um, we have another client that he would, every time that there was a break, and I'm not going to do it because I'm not a dancer, um, he would be up on stage dancing. And we had a video wall with the 150 participants on, and all 150 are up dancing too. And it was every time we had a break, and it was just a way to get people up and moving and energetic and not having to you know, be like, oh, here comes the next, next session, right? So anything with music is a great way to go with it. Um, we've done hot sauce tastings. This is called Torture Your CEOs. So we have a client that their C-level, the employees made the C-levels do hot sauce tasting. So kind of like that Hot Ones show that's out there. They made them do hot sauce tasting. So these poor C-levels are on you know, camera and they're turning red and they're sweating and they're drinking water and all of these poor things. And the employees loved every second of it. It was fun. It was a great not for the sea levels necessarily, but it was a great team building, right? Like the employees had a new perspective on their executives. And the next time we came around for the event, they were like, hey, can we do that again? And the sea levels were like, no. <laughs> and they did it anyway. Um, so it, it was just something different and unexpected, right? And it's that unexpected part. We've done things with hashtags. So hashtags can go one of two ways. We can do things with social walls where we are having people, you know, go ahead and post about a particular event just to get excitement up, have those conversations going. Um, you know, we have a hashtag for this one. This is Digimark on Hawaii. Um, but we also have used it for philanthropic purposes. So we have had a client who every time somebody posted with a hashtag, they donated a dollar to their cause. And it was a great way to get the employees really involved with supporting that philanthropic cause. So hashtags are a great way to do that too. And it was fun to watch other people from outside that particular company actually start getting into that conversation. Um, swag is a huge one. Swag goes a long way. <laughs> and we were talking yesterday about, you know, what you might want to include in swag and um, sustainability conversations that come around swag and things like that. Um, I mentioned the people with the, the island retreat, right? We used a lot of swag for them. So day one, we sent them a, um, a gift box that was all about 
um, it, you know, I had the, the notebook and the pen and the workbooks and everything else that they were going to be using during the event. Day two, we sent them a second box. That one was everything related to taking care of yourself. So there was this big plush robe in there and bath bombs and everything related to self-care. And then day three, they got another one in the morning. That one was everything related to yoga. So there was yoga mats in there and water bottles and all kinds of things so that they could kind of stretch and move around and take care of themselves and things like that. So you can do swag from the very smallest little thing to something that's much bigger. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with that. And the biggest thing that we need to do with experience is provide them with a pattern interrupt. And all that that means is we're, tr we're trying to surprise them, right? We're trying to take something that, you know, they're expecting, okay, we have this session, then we have this session, then we have this session, right? If we can give them something that's a pattern interrupt that catches their attention, it switches their mind long enough to wake them up, get them excited, and be like, okay, wait, what's coming next? So if I literally start, and I don't have any, if I started throwing things at you guys from stage, right? If I had chocolate and I started throwing things and I didn't forewarn you about it, other than maybe, hey, catch, that would be a pattern interrupt. It's something that you're not expecting. So anytime that we can take an experience, one of those little elements, whether it's a tasting, whether it's swag, whether it's anything, and give somebody a pattern interrupt, we're gonna give them a different experience online than they've ever expected before. And it could be something as simple as the yogi. It can be something as simple as the music. It can be something as simple as the presenter who you would never expect to dance on stage, dancing on stage. So anything that we can do to offer that pattern interrupt is going to provide a completely different experience for people than just that typical vid video meeting that they're used to. So just to sum up, when done correctly, Digital events transform how people will interact with you. When done correctly, digital events are going to build those relationships between you and your connections. And when done correctly, digital events are going to provide that access to that broader audience to help build and scale your business. So I want to challenge each one of you to take one event, find one, work really hard at it, and do it correctly so that we can go ahead and build those relationships, transform how they're relating to you, and go ahead and grow and scale your business. All right, and if you guys ever have any questions about an event, whether it's one that you're thinking about, whether you have one that's upcoming and you're like, oh, I just don't know what to do with it, just ping me. I am always happy to talk through an event with anybody. Um, the QR code on there is just my LinkedIn page. Um, you can also connect with me through my virtual event.pro, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have on that. And I thought I had a question slide, but I don't. So does anybody have any questions about an event you have, if, uh, anything that we talked about with some of the excitement, the engagement, anything along those lines? You're going to have to grab the box. We should have put that at a table there. <laughs> Um, what about engagement for events that last multiple days, but not one after another? So multiple days that are split not up? Like every Monday for the next month. Right. So uh, that's going to be a lot in terms of content, right? So you're going to have to make sure that the content's really engaging with people to make them want to show up every Monday versus it for it to feel like a required meeting, right? Um, so you're definitely going to want to look at what your content is, who your speakers are. Um, if you can mix up your speakers so that it's not the same person talking every week or every month, that's great as well. Um, again, it's a pattern interrupt, right? It's something different that you're going to be offering to them. So I would mix it up that way. Yeah. And when it comes to longer ones, we've done events that are two weeks long every day for two weeks long. Like that's a lot to ask of somebody. Um, and same thing, you're just trying to make sure, you know, that we're incorporating all those senses. If we can add something beyond just the visual and the hearing so that they have something different to, to, to do at this event, um, some different way to experience it. Sometimes, you know, if we have product that we can send them, 
Um, I love group unboxings. I actually should add that to the slide. I love group unboxings. I love sending people a box that says, do not open till Monday at 2 p.m. when I tell you that you can open it. And then I get everybody on camera and I make everybody open it at the same time because I want to see all of their reactions and I want them to see all of their reactions, right? So we will sometimes do themed boxes, um, especially if we're doing a party. So let's say we're doing a themed party and, um, you know, we're going to do a 1920s themed party that night. You know, so we might send them a box that, you know, has, you know, for the girls have the long pearls on them and the feather thing to put in your hair and, you know, anything Gatsby related that we can send to them. Um, and we will make them all unbox it at the same time. And they all start putting their stuff on on camera. And it's super fun to watch. It's a, it's a new level of energy that people get to provide on the event. Anything else? I'm going to try to throw it. Yay, you caught it. <laughs> uh, I know that we're talking about the digital space when it comes to events, but um, do you have any recommendations for breaking the pattern when it comes to live events? Yeah, um, I make people move anytime that I can. So that's one of the beauties if you do have an event that you can have multiple rooms is getting up and making people move. Um, food is a big one, right? We always break things up with food just to give people some energy and, and get them talking. And then networking, finding a way to get these people together. Um, sometimes we'll do topic tables at lunch if we want to do kind of a guided discussion. Um, sometimes we let that kind of be a little bit more free form. Um, parties are always fun. You know, anytime we can get people together where they're able to kind of relax and, and do something different, um, that's always good. And then again, your content, your, you know, making sure that it's something that people want to come and see. Um, you know, there are amazing speakers. There, I always tell people <laughs> there's famous speakers, right, who may or may not be amazing, right, but they're famous, right? And then we have amazing speakers, and then we have speakers that are kind of still working on it a little bit, right? Um, and you can have all three of those at event. I've, I've seen all of them. I've seen some amazing speakers, you know, that were – not known people. And I've seen really, really, really famous speakers that I was like, hmm. <laughs> I hope that check was where it at. Um, so, you know, it's really going to be about your content and making sure it's a good fit for your audience. You know, I might think that this topic is really, really interesting and nobody else in the room may think it is, right? So you want to be really careful when you're choosing your speakers to make sure that it's really going to be something that is you know, your, your attendees are going to be interested in. And that goes back to our digital marketing, right? We have to know our target audience. We have to know their interests. We have to know what they want. So that's going to be really important. All right. Anything else? Awesome. Perfect. Thank you, Lisa. Well, thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate it. <laughs>